How can I make my garden a better place for wildlife? Well, I think the best thing is to go into your garden and imagine being the animal that you might want to live there. So if you were to go into your garden and imagine, say, that you were a blue tit, what would you want to find in your garden if you were a blue tit? I would like to find somewhere to, like, perch. So you'd need a tree yeah. or a bush. So if you have a new garden, then maybe you want to plant a tree or a bush in it. It'll take some time to grow, but they, some species grow quite quickly. So that would be good for the birds. But what about, you know, first thing in the morning? If a blue tit comes into your garden first thing in the morning, what do you do when you first get out of bed in the morning and go downstairs? I'd have breakfast. Exactly. So putting food in your garden is a great way of encouraging animals to visit. So in the case of the blue tit, you might want to put up a bird feeder put some sunflower seeds or some peanuts in it and then the birds would come for their breakfast or if it were different species maybe it was butterflies for instance you might want to plant some flowers because for breakfast they have nectar they want sugar that they suck out of the flowers so imagine you're that type of animal think about what the animal eats and then try and put that into your garden but it's not just food is it what do other what do you need when you go home why do you live in a house um well, you'd need somewhere to, like, stay and... Yeah, yeah, they need a house too, don't they? They need shelter, basically. So very often you can find things, in the case of the blue tit, like a, a bird box. They like to nest in hollow trees. If you don't have a big hollow tree, you can put a box up and they'll go into that. And you mm. can make those yourself and you'll find the plans for them online. Mm. Or you can go to the local garden centre and buy them. And it's not just <coughs> bird boxes. You can buy homes for insects, for hedgehogs, for bees, all sorts of things. So think about those animals and try and attract as many of them as you possibly can into your garden. Well, my school has like a hedgehog house and this like bug house called the Bug Hotel and that attracts quite a bit of wildlife. They do work and as I say you can make your own which is more fun or, or you can buy them and as long as you put them in the right place then the wildlife will, will come to it. Have you got any top tips for finding wildlife? I have. My top tip and I always say this to people is buy an alarm clock. <laughs> Set it slightly earlier than everyone else gets up because if you're first up most of those animals are still there because they haven't been scared off by everyone else when i was your age i had an alarm clock it's very loud alarm clock to wake up the entire house which didn't please my mum and my sister very much but then i would sneak out and i'd have maybe an hour an hour and a half before school when everything was relatively quiet and i'd see a lot more wildlife at that time but it's not just about being up early i think you've also got to learn to look for wildlife and when we normally wander around, we look at the pavement in front of us so we don't trip over, we look at the roads so we don't get run over. But how much time when you're walking to school do you normally spend looking into the tops of the trees? Probably not much, occasionally. Mm -hmm. But you, if you're looking for birds, then you've got to be looking all around you. And sometimes the wildlife's not there to see directly, so you have to go searching for it so you can turn things over, uh, turn a brick over in your garden. You might find some wood lice, a centipede, an earwig, spiders. So sometimes you have to actually search for that wildlife as well by turning things over and looking inside, under leaves and so on and so forth. Is that all of your questions? OK, yeah. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. What have you seen in your school grounds here that you might already be thinking about ticking off in the Nature Watch project? I've seen quite a few bunnies and sometimes in the summer we get like these butterflies and these insects as well. Excellent. So you've got mammals insects in the form of uh, 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 the butterflies and all you need to do is find out which species they are because we'd like to know more than butterflies and we only have about 55 different species of butterfly in the UK and here you're probably only likely to find about 10 to 15 of those so it will probably be quite easy to identify them if you have a good look at them and then check online and then fill in the form and download it we'd like to know which butterflies you see in, in your school grounds and what about at home do you have a garden at home yeah. Okay, and what's that like? Is it good for wildlife? Yeah, it's like the grass is quite tall, maybe three or four inches. Um, and then we've got trees and bushes and like leaves and things. Um, and then I sometimes find animals because I've got a trampoline and it gets quite shady and muddy behind it and I sometimes find some animals in there as well. You see, even if you've got a small garden, if you've got grass and bushes and trees, like you say, um, and some shelter, and maybe that's your trampoline, things are living underneath that, then you've got a great resource for wildlife. And if you go out and explore that, get down on your hands and knees with your Wellingtons on, then you're bound to find lots of different things. It sounds to me like your garden could be really good for wildlife 
and you might be able to send us lots of reports for Nature Watch. So I hope you're going to take part. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much.